Welcome to Pick Up and Pearl, a weekly knitting podcast from Portland, Oregon. I'm your host, Spencer, and this is Macintosh. To find out more about the projects I'm working on, you can check out the show notes at www.12ouncebeehouse.com. You can also follow me on Instagram as 12 Ounce Bee House and on Twitter as Lethal Cupcake. Hi, everybody. So I hope you've all had a good week. Someone's feeling a little needy today, so I thought he could be part of the show. Actually, I don't know if you can see him because he's sitting in my lap, but there he is. Hi, buddy. So, I changed up the background again. Um, we rearranged our living room, so now the couch faces one of the windows, so I thought maybe I would try it this way. We'll see how it goes. Um, so let's get started. There's a lot of negative knitting this week, like frogging and tanking and just kind of a pain. So, let's start with my Maya, which is a Carrie Bossick hog pattern. And I am... Uh, this one, I don't know what happened. I, um... It doesn't look like it is very far from last week. I think it was probably here last week. Well, I probably was twice this far, but I had like five or six rows of like really tight gauge knitting. Like, I don't know if I picked this up after I was mad at one of my other projects or what the deal was, but um, I had to take back because it was like puckering in the fabric pretty bad. So that's obnoxious. But anyway, I'm still working along on it. It's um, knit out of Cascade 220 in the white. Um, I like it. I want it to be done. I um, don't need, normally you need, I need a cardigan in the summer in Oregon, but it's been 89 to 90 and it's going to be 100 over the weekend. So don't really need a sweater yet. So it's kind of good, but it'll be good for at night in the later summer. It's summer here till like the middle of September, so beginning of October. So we'll see. Um, it'll be done when it's done. So I think that's the only one I worked on that didn't have problems. So yeah. So let's start with the Viajante um, by Martina Bem. If you watched my podcast from two weeks ago, I showed you. It's out of this beautiful Nassau blue Tosh Merino Prairie. Um, yeah, Tosh Merino Prairie. And I cast it on and pulled it out and cast it on and pulled it out, trying to get those middle... Um, increases to look the way I wanted and I even like did a little like fake steam blocking it out to like see how they would look and I just didn't like it I didn't like how the prairie looked in it it looked it just wasn't what I want and that's a slog of a um project people who love the yarn they're knitting with have a problem getting through that project so I decided it was better to cut my losses as it was and figure out something else to do with the yarn. So I have to rip it out finally, um, which is why I don't have it here with me. But um, I'm going to do the final like frogging of it tonight. And then um, it's going to become the new Quince & Co shawl, the Love & Lemon shawl. It's just a triangle shawl that seems pretty like basic and easy and has a little bit of fringe on the ends. And it's one of their brand new shawl patterns. And it's out of the Piper, which is their new lace weight. But um, I have this Madeline Tosh that needs to be done, used. And it's this gorgeous blue-green color, aqua -y color, that'll go with a lot of the summer dresses and fall red dresses that I have. So that's what I'm going to cast on later today. Um, somebody's trying to text message me. All right, let's move on to the next one. So the next one is Fizz, and um, last week you saw I probably had half of the 
um, of the waistband done in the Quince & Company chickadee in the honey color way. Well, the color I had picked out to go with it, I finally got my hands on it and I hated the other color I had picked to go with it. And I looked and there wasn't really anything else I thought would go with it. So instead of make something that I wasn't 100% comfortable with for as daring as this top is going to be, I decided that I would just cast the whole thing on again in a different yarn base altogether. So I decided to use the Cascade 220 in the olive oil colorway. And um, the contrasting color is going to be the aqua that I use for the provisional cast on. It's a, um, it's the Lake Chatlin Heather in the Cascade 220 Sport. But the nice thing about it is I have enough Chatlin Heather from a sweater that went horribly wrong that I can make a little shrug or shawl to go over it so that it will stretch my wear of this sweater into the late summer, early fall. So that's fun. Um, I'm transferring it over onto a needle, another needle. That's why there's so many um, needles there. And um, there's that. Oh, I did cast something new on this week. So we'll talk about that because the last one in Frogged and Resurrected Like the Phoenix is bad. It's just really sad. So, um... I cast on a new pattern this week. It's the Horchensia, and it's another Andy Satterlung pattern, and it's just a deep v-necked, very short, cropped sweater. Um, it's very plain, it's very basic, it has a little bit of a collar. Um, it's knit in her seamless way of doing it. And I'm knitting it out of Cascade 220 in the Robin Egg Blue. And I picked this blue because I have two dresses that I'm in the process of making that have this blue as an accent fabric. So I thought it would be cool to have it so that I can wear these dresses because they're um, quilting white cotton. So with tights and sweaters, I can wear them all year round. So that's what this is going to become. And I just started it... Um, I started it yesterday in the, um, no, it was a couple days ago now, in the post-giant frogging sadness from the next project. And my next project is the, is my project for the outfit along, which is by Lauren of Ladybird and Andy Satterlong of Untangling Knots. It ends on the 31st, so I've got to get my little button gear, but I had a major setback. I know last week I had talked about how Andy had come out and said that the gauge on the pattern was marked wrong, and, um, and she gave a set of directions for the current gauge and the other gauge, and when I went back, there was no way to fix it or fudge it. There was just no way to fudge it. The armhole was just too big. I ended up being able to put both of my dachshunds heads through it by the time it was by the time I was done. And um And as much as I love the Maya cardigan, the Myra cardigan, I'll probably go back and knit it at some point, but there was no way I was going to be able to like re-knit it now. Especially since I had done so much progress and I was on to picking up the sleeves. So, that being said, I ripped out the whole sweater and found a new pattern. And this is the, I gotta look up who it's by, hold on. Um, this is the, oops, nope, Siri don't want you. This is the Bright Star Catalog, Bright Star Cardigan. And it's from a Twist Collective, maybe 2011, 2010. And it's by Karen, or I just looked up, Kathy Karen. And it's a little crop sweater with short sleeves and a big collar that comes up off of it. And so I thought this would be perfect. 
Um, it's got texture to the part. It's raglan. Um, I am really comfortable making raglan, so I know how it will. I know how I can fudge it if I have to, and so that's what it became. Um, this is the Battle and Toss Vintage in the button jar blue colorway. I um, I got it at. Happy Knits here in Portland. They have the most amazing collection of Madeline Tosh. If I ever need anything, they have it most of the time. I love them. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it. I um, am lucky enough to have four skeins of very well-matched button jar blue that I don't need to alternate every skein. Um, I didn't on the original cardigan I knit it and I'm not doing it on this one and I'm not finding that much of a problem. I'm about, I'm about two repeats of this pattern, of this like, um, I don't remember what she calls the pattern, but of this like stitch pattern from being able to start the ribbing, which is awesome because I'm just about ready to be sick of I'm just a little about, I'm just a tad bit sick of doing these same four rows, like, over and over and over again. But no, that's exciting. My, um, dress for the outfit along is sewn, or not sewn, it is cut out. I have all the excess trim coming for that. I am just waiting on these vegan leather handles that I am using for a bag that I'm going to make to match it. So, um, other than that, um, I think that's it. Yep, I hope you all have a good weekend. I hope you stay cool. It's going to be super hot here for us in Portland. So, um, I guess that'll be all for this week. Um, have a great week. Uh, hope you get a lot of time to knit. Bye.